One of the things that distinguishes a college literature course is the adoption perhaps of a uh, critical or uh, theoretical perspective for reading the works. And so in this unit, we're going to adopt uh, the perspective of Frank Kermode as in kind of thinking about what the end is uh, within a sense of narrative. And Kermode uh, invites us to think about the end as a fictive structure, as a part of narrative that uh, is essentially uh, embedded in our experience of reading fiction. Um, a couple of points here uh, at the outset. Um, is resolution such an essential part uh, to the story's end? Do we expect resolution as we read, right? That resolution promises coherence, resolution promises a, a sense of larger meaning, uh, and resolution offers a sense of narrative direction, right? You read a book, you have it in your hands, you can see how far the end is. And so you start to think about how what you're reading now fits with what you assume the end will be. Um, the end, as Kermode points out uh, through the thoughts of Iris Murdoch, the British novelist, is artificial, but it's also consoling uh, that the end ties things up. The end of a book uh, offers a sense of coherence in the end. Um, and Kermode wants us to think about how time uh, works with that sense of uh, narrative end. And so his example is the sense of the tick-tock of a clock here. Uh, the tick-tock for Kermode is a pattern of Genesis and Apocalypse, right? That the tick initiates time and the tock closes time uh, in an interesting way. And so you can think about your own sense of hearing a clock tick and how it um, plays on your sense of, of an unfolding narrative um, in the moment. If you've ever been in a, in a testing room where a clock is ticking, you'll have that sense of you know uh, urgency as, as, as time ticks down. Another thing I would like invite you to think about too, right, is that sense of since um, ticking clocks are so uh, are so much not a part of our worlds anymore, uh, you know how do other sounds uh, offer that sense of beginning and end or genesis and apocalypse to use Kermode's terms, right? Like you can think about the sense of how uh, your computer, if you have an Apple computer, how it sounds when you uh, start it up and initiate it, that kind of announcing uh, uh, signal or sign. And, you know, how does that offer a sense of beginning and ending uh, to, to your own sense of time as you uh, start up? For Kermode, um, to, to, to look at a passage from his uh, sense of an ending, uh, Kermode says, the clock says tick-tock. Tick is our word for a physical beginning, tock our word for an end. We say they differ. What enables them to be different is a special kind of middle. We can perceive a duration only when it is organized. The first interval is organized and limited, the second not. We use fictions to enable the end to confer organization and form on the temporal structure. The interval between the two sounds, between tick and tock, is now charged with significant duration. The clock's tick-tock I take to be a model of what we call plot, an organization that humanizes time by giving it form. And the interval between tock and tick represents purely successive, disorganized time of the sort that we need to humanize. So how does that sense of ending humanize time for us in reading fiction? Um, Kermode thinks through the, the sense of, uh, through, thinks through examples of apocalyptic writing and how the end proposed in an apocalyptic piece um, offers a sense of, of, of coherence or uh, unity to the ways in which humanity experiences time in a larger historical sense. How do we experience time um, within a piece of fiction or writing? So you think about, uh, first of all here, fictions of the end, uh, that larger sense of end, right? That larger sense of the world's end um, of apocalypse or uh, an eschatological ending, that sense of the last days. Um, the apocalyptic writing uh, of the ancient world, you know, is was, was, was replete with endings of the world, you know, um, moments where a divine judgment sorts the, you know, the, 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 those who were faithful from those who were unfaithful. Um, 
And the the best example or the you know, most replete example in, in our experience um, in the Judeo-Christian world perhaps is the, the book of Revelation, the, the closing of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the Christian Bible. Um, the book of Revelation offers a, a, a sense of ending in which a new Jerusalem appears uh, in the midst of a chaotic and fallen uh, Babylon. Uh, that book was written with a, you know, a strong sense of, of offering uh, a symboled version of, of the Roman Empire and its violence and change and trying to offer uh, early Christians a sense of, of hope and, um, and purpose within th that, that chaos. Um, and if you, 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 you know, follow kind of the symbols that work through the book of Revelation, you can kind of see the Roman world peeking out at various points. Um, apocalyptic writing in general, though, uh, within the ancient world had very kind of patterned ends. There was a sense of decline that was present within apocalyptic writing. The world was sliding towards some end and that the world was at a point where it was almost as bad as it was going to get. That we were almost at that that nadir, right? That moment where, where things were were as you know where things were were at their worst, and then there would be a moment where the divine would initiate a a, a new uh, a, a renovation or a new world or a restoration, a second coming, and and things would be returned to uh, order versus the the chaos. As I said, that in 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 the book of Revelation. Uh, it's a present Babylon that reflects the Roman world and its violence that is, is patterned against a new Jerusalem or a, a new city coming down from the clouds. And this is one kind of, you know, apocalypse or end. The end, you know, can also be read as the end of an order that we, we put plots on time. Uh, that, you know, empires end, geological epochs end, and, and we try to figure out, you know, how... Do we move beyond that, as Kermode calls it, a talk, right? A sense of an ending, that, there, that there's a, a new beginning, um, you know, much like, you know, um, uh, William Butler Yeats and his sense of the gyres, right? That the, the time is moving in these endless beginnings and endings. You know, with history, as Kermode notes, we impose plot on time, perhaps as a substitute for myth. And you can think about uh, perhaps an example here might be the Cold War. Where you know where we have these kind of mythic depictions of good and evil, and uh, and how those have how that 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 has kind of mythic energy in, in trying to understand time and its a possible you know apocalyptic ending in nuclear conflict. Um, we also you know offer the end as a means of of chronicling or forecasting natural shifts. So we can think about geological epics here. Or, um, for instance, the uh, scientists who now see this particular moment geologically on the Earth as what they call the Anthropocene, which is a, uh, uh, an epoch in which human behaviors have, uh, uh, have, have, have shaped uh, the, the natural world of Earth. And, and so how does human presence in the world perhaps offer its own sense of geological epic uh, and how is how is that playing out towards an end um, in our present moment perhaps um, the end here you know instead of, of of a defining decay or chaos it you know plotting an end to time offers a sense of cause and effect it helps us understand why is this an end and in what ways is time working towards an end here, perhaps? And um, T.S. Eliot's uh, great poem, The Wasteland, if you if you are familiar with it, offers a sense of of uh, of trying to find a sense of order or a sense of hope within uh, a, a decaying world or a world that is coming undone. And the the sense of terror that comes within an understanding of end. Um, also, as, as Yeats uh, noted, as Kermode reading Yeats notes, that, that the end has an element of enunciatory violence, that the end is promising a moment of terror 
and that our terrors today perhaps reflect that sense of a new beginning appearing and an ending appearing um, for ourselves. The end can also um, be read as a personal end here, right? That there is one one's own end in death. Um, Edgar Allan Poe in his short stories narrates a character's end beyond death itself, you know, as a means of trying to understand end and, and what happens in that moment of death. Do we experience a common death um, in the, it, it, you know, in the ending of our lives? Um, Kermode wants to think about personal end, perhaps through the sense of how does tragedy reflect a sense of end, or how does tragedy reflect a sense of resolution? And, you know, as Kermode thinks through how apocalypse has been seen historically, he notes that the Reformation may be a moment where the terrors of apocalypse were absorbed by tragedy, that in that moment, people begin to think less apocalyptically, perhaps, and more in a sense of of tragedy and how the individual life uh, is shaped. So for instance, you know, what is the significance of a literary character who moves towards an end or into an end without knowing it? How do we, you know, think through that tragic moment where the character uh, turns towards an end? And how does it redefine our own sense of human freedom versus the kind of inescapable contingency of life that we are um, dependent on causes that we have no control over, perhaps in the end, um, and 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 how does tragedy reflect that sense of of being contingent upon uh, those causes? Um, also, the, the Kermode will note right that one's own death lies hidden from oneself, and so how does that you know reshape your sense of end here, that you move towards death without knowing it? Um, how do you draw hope within an imagined end that, that, that you might call up um, in terms of narrative? When Kermode thinks about fictive ends here, he thinks about them as narrative structures. So for purposes of our, our examination of, of, of these apocalyptic works that we're looking at in the first unit of the class, Right? How does the end exist within a narrative moment? Not only the moment of the, of the novel itself, but also what is it like to read a book about the end of the world while the world is ending around us? That kind of central question um, for the class. Um, does fiction offer an act of escape or a suspension of real time as you read? You know, do you read with a sense of shared end in apocalyptic stories? Do you have uh, uh, do we all within the course have a sense of shared end, um, perhaps here? Does reading work as an act of empathy when you're reading about horrified or traumatized characters? Do you identify with Can Candace in Severance, or how do you identify with Mark uh, in Colson Whitehead Zone 1? And then when you reach the end of the novel, do you return to your own world in a different way? Does the end re is the end redefined? as you, you come back to uh, the quote unquote real world. You can also think about your psycho own psychological responses to severance or zone one here, right? That um, what is it like as, as Kermode will note, right? That we um, experience the mere image of, of a horror of the end when we see a world that's in the hands of exhausted survivors. How do you identify with Candace or Mark in this world or not as you read? Uh, for Commode, right, in the, in the end, right, he says that the end has perhaps lost its naive imminence for us, right, that the apocalypse is not something that is existing just on the horizon of history. Instead, he says, we inhabit a kind of middle time, as he uses the word from Thomas Aquinas' sense of angelic time, uh, of living in an ongoing crisis where the end is no longer imminent, right, it's not on the horizon, that it is imminent, that it is a part of us, that uh, th that we are a part of the end in the same way as that the end is a part of us, um, perhaps as we read and as we try to think through what time means. And narrative, particularly fiction, offers perhaps a similar experience of this middle time, that we can inhabit a an apocalypse for a time and then come out of it back into our own world and see its own chaos and its own decay and understand it perhaps in a different way to enter an end that perhaps, as Kermode notes, humanizes time. 